This article is about the 225 BC consul. See Gaius Attilius Regulus Serenus for the 257 and 250 BC consul. Gaius Attilius Regulus was one of the two Roman consuls who fought a Celtic invasion of Italy in 225 BC to 224 BC. He however was killed in battle and beheaded. Regulus came from a prominent family of consuls for four generations. The family originally hailed from southern Italy. Family. Regulus was a younger son of the Roman hero Marcus Artilius Regulus, the consul captured during the First Punic War, and grandson of another Marcus Artilius Regulus. His elder brother was Roman consul for the year 227 BC, together with Publius Valerius Flaccus and consul suffect is for 217 BC replacing Gaius Flaminius and later censor. An uncle of the same name was also twice consul during the First Punic War. Regulus's father Marcus Attilius Regulus died by 250 BC, by a manner debated subsequently by historians. His mother Marcia allegedly tortured two Punic prisoners to death in revenge. According to Livy, etc., the hostage consul had at least two surviving sons and one surviving daughter when he returned to Carthage. Military career. He was elected consul in 225 BC as the plebeian consul with the patrician Lucius Emilius Papus, and was sent to quell a revolt in Sardinia which he quickly accomplished. He then returned to the Italian mainland to fight the Gauls, and fell in the Battle of Telamon. Battle of Telamon. The consul had been sent to Sardinia, from where he returned with his legions. After hearing stories about the Celtic invasion of Etruria, the consul returned hastily to engage in battle. Since Roman consuls of this era desired triumphs, Attilius decided to engage the Gauls on his own. By being the first to engage high battle, he hoped to get the larger share of the credit of the victory. However, his plans miscalculated when the Roman cavalry encountered the more experienced Celtic cavalry and was cut to pieces. According to Polybius, Histories 2.27 minus 2.28 Just at this time, Gaius Attilius, the other consul, had reached Pisa from Sardinia with his legions and was on his way to Rome, marching in the opposite direction to the enemy. When the Celts were near Telamon in Etruria, their advanced foragers encountered the advance guard of Gaius and were made prisoners. On being examined by the consul they narrated all that had recently occurred and told him of the presence of the two armies, stating that the Gauls were quite near and Lucius behind them. The news surprised him but at the same time made him very hopeful, as he thought he had caught the Gauls on the march between the two armies. He ordered his tribunes to put the legions in fighting order and to advance thus at marching pace in so far as the nature of the ground allowed the attack in line. He himself had happily noticed a hill situated above the road by which the Celts must pass, and taking his cavalry with him, advanced at full speed. Being anxious to occupy the crest of the hill before their arrival and be the first to begin the battle, feeling certain that thus he would get the largest share of credit for the result. At first the battle was confined to the hill, all the armies gazing on it. So great were the numbers of cavalry from each host combating their pell-mell. In this action Gaius the consul fell in the melee fighting with desperate courage and his head was brought to the Celtic kings, but the Roman cavalry, after a stubborn struggle, at length overmastered the enemy and gained possession of the hill. Regulus's death did not dismay his officers who continued the battle without him and won possession of the hill. However, the Roman victory was due to the Gaulish decision to face the battle both ways and thus divide their energies. The surviving consul Lucius Emilius Papus obtained sole credit for the victory, and was awarded a triumph. It is not known if Regulus was married or left any surviving issue. No Atelier Reguli appear in subsequent histories.